the rules for calculating. Okay, so here's the rules. You can write these down, but your calculations can't be any more accurate than the least accurate measurement. It's all about measurements, guys. It's all about that measurement that, that, that's the weakest or the least accurate. It has to be dictated through everything you do. So let me give you an example. Let's say that you've made a measurement, uh, 120, uh, let's say 123 uh, meters. And you're going to add that to um, 14 well, let's just say 10 meters, okay? And you didn't measure this. This is not a significant digit. You're not sure if this is significant. So you, this could be a one, could be a two, could be a three. You're unsure. We're unsure about the ones place, so how could we ever be any sure beyond that point? So we have to look at our relative numbers to see where our uncertainty is when we do this. Now this isn't so bad because like you just add the numbers, but this last number could be a five, a six, because we don't know what these numbers are. So let's say I do, um, let's do 123.4, and I'm going to add that to uh, 10 again. Okay, so 10 meters. Let's say we do that top measurement and make it more accurate. Well, when I add these numbers, I get 133.4 if you kind of do what you did in math class, right? You get 133.4. But the problem is, I can't say that for sure because I'm already questioning this number. Okay, now I know the 3 is for sure because this is where my question is. I don't know if that's a 4 or a 5. I don't know if this is a 0 or a 1 or a 2. I'm not sure what that number is. So if I don't even know what this number is, what's this number here? Can I say it's a 0? Could I say it's a 9? Could I say that it's a 3? I could say anything I want. So how do I know that 4 is any, any certainty at all? I don't even have a guess as to what that number is because I guessed here. So that's the point, is when measurements can only be as accurate as the least accurate measurement. So even though I measured this 4, I have to drop it out. I can only say 133 meters, and I come back to the same answer. And that's the difference between math class and a science class, because we made measurements. We made actual measurements. We actually saw these numbers, almost saw all these numbers, and we made a guess. That's the difference. Okay, now there's two rules. I was using the rules for addition and subtraction. There's another rule for multiplying and dividing. I'm not going to go into the origins of why we have the different rules. If you want to, we can discuss it in class. But it just gets into understanding more about you know, how we add and how we multiply and divide and the rules for all that. But focus on this right here. We use the number of decimal places and we use the number of significant figures. Now I'll show you some examples. I got a, uh, I'm going to show you an example of adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Uh, I'm just going to go through some basic calculations. I have some adding and, well, I guess adding again, uh, multiplication and some division. Um, I've got it divided up into the two main brackets, which is the um, adding has special rules, multiplication and division have their own rules. Uh, these rules on the side for adding also go with multiple, I'm sorry, they also go with subtraction. And I don't know why I just didn't do, you know, let's just change this one to subtraction and we'll do a subtraction. Okay, so. Real quick, uh, first thing we want to know is when we're adding and subtracting, we count decimal places. Count decimal places. So what that means is over here I have, counting decimal places doesn't mean only after the decimal, by the way. It can be above. It decimal places, not just below the decimal. This is still a decimal place. A decimal place, that's in the ones place, there's a tens place, a hundreds place. Anyway, this number goes down to the hundredth place, this one goes down to the thousandth place. So we're going to round our final answer based on the number of decimal places. So if we do 2.41 minus uh, 0.212, we end up with an answer of, oops, I'm just going to do it in the calculator real faster, 2.41 minus 0.212, I end up with 2. 0.198. Now that's not my final answer. I have to round it to this decimal place here, the hundredth place. So therefore I have 2.20. Actually, it's a good one because I wanted to end on a zero. You have to have that other that last zero in there. This is like the hardest one when we're doing our calculations. So I'm rounding to this place. So when I round, I have to keep the zero there. If I write it as 2.2, .2, then it looks like my last significant figure is in the 10th place when I want it in the 100th place. Have to keep the integrity of the calculation in place. Uh, if we go down to the adding, again I have one, two, I guess I just happen to subconsciously choose two problems that have the same kind of setup. Um, so let's just uh, erase something here. Let's 
Um, you know, let's erase this number here. Let's get rid of this. Okay, and let's add in. Let's say it's uh, three point two. Let's say seven. There you go. There we go. That'll work. All right. So if we go back to my colors here, okay, thirteen point two plus four point four eight one is going to give me seventeen point six eight one. I have to round here to that place, to the tenth place. So that's where my significant figures end. These don't count. We don't know what those numbers are at all. So anyway, we round this to 17.7. .7. There's my final answer. So counting decimal places when you're doing significant figures for adding and subtracting. Over here, multiplication and division. We count sig figs. Okay, so 4.2 times 1.73, and you end up with 7.266. Now, if we look at this number here, here we have two sig figs, and here we have three. Oh, that's a weird three. Let's get rid of that. Uh, three sig figs. So my final answer should have two. So one, two is where I'm going to round. So my final answer comes out to 7.3. And there you go. Just counting significant figures here. And the same thing for the division. I have one, two, three. Three significant figures here. And in this one, I have four. So my final answer has to have three. 315 divided by 1.261 and I end up with 20, 249.80 okay so three significant figures one two three again I have to round based on the eight so two that becomes a zero moves that up to a five so five zero Right, now the question is, do I put the decimal or do I not put the decimal? Because if I put the decimal, it's going to change the significant figures. Remember, I want to have three in my final answer. So if I leave the, uh, the decimal off, I have one, two, that doesn't count. If the decimal's there, then this counts. So I want one, two, three. So I want to have the decimal in this final answer. Okay, so without the decimal, two significant figures. Remember, the decimal counts. Uh, or the, 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 the zeros, the trailing zeros count if there's a decimal put present. In this case, I put the decimal here, makes that a significant figure. Without the decimal, take the decimal away, it's no longer significant. Okay, so there's a quick little review of significant figures, adding and subtracting. Don't forget the two separate rules. Uh, count decimal places for adding and subtracting, and count significant figures for uh, multiplication and division. Thanks a lot.